What's up, y'all? Pete here. It's September 26th. I'm in downtown Manchester. Behind me is a convention center attached to the Radisson, where the first annual public safety trade show just happened. It's, uh, an, it was an event sponsored by the New Hampshire Association of Chiefs of Police. There's maybe 70 vendors here selling everything from body armor to uh, leases on Harley Davidson's uh, for police departments to firearms to training to uh, all sorts of things. Uh, I had originally, when learning, when I learned of this event, uh, thought about coming out here, do some cop locking, you know, dressing some cop lock gear, hand out some DVDs, some literature, try to have some conversation, at least let those attending know that everything they do is not supported by everyone that they claim to serve and protect. Instead, I decided to dress up a little bit and just go in there. Uh, I'm an independent journalist, uh, just doing a story on this event and uh, just talk to some folks. I took notes uh, after I talked to people. Most people were pretty receptive. Uh, I took some B-roll at most a lot of displays, so this is what happened. The vendor for the local Chrysler dealership, hoping to get sales or leases to police departments, stressed to me the fact that the Charger was made in the U.S., or at least in North America. The text used in the brochure caused me to conclude that the marketing department knew their audience well. I was told that a department can lease a Harley for around three grand a year versus buying one, which costs a minimum of twenty grand, and that at one time Manch PD had four motorcycles, but they now have three. Leasing options were constrained just to motorcycles. I learned that one Manch-based firearm shop just implemented a program for police departments to lease their firearms, including sniper rifles and sidearms. And if there's ever a functionality issue, that it'll be fixed within 24 hours. In case you're wondering, the cost per day for a department to lease a Glock comes in around 40 cents. Attention all y'all concerned about fusion centers. Are you familiar with Reese.net? It's a nationwide secure information sharing system utilized by law enforcement, which provides supplemental capacity and expertise at no cost to them, and is paid for with annual DOJ grants. Though I had a 10 minute conversation with the spokesperson, my request to take B-roll of their display was declined. There were a couple body armor companies present, including U.S. Armor, and later when I spoke with Protective Products, uh, I was told that they had a $40 million contract with the Department of Defense. All I could think about was what a misallocation of resources. Models for cops came in around a thousand bucks, and there's even one for canines which cost a little bit more. When I asked if their products were available to non-law enforcement, I got a look that essentially communicated, are you crazy? And was told that they don't want criminals to get their hands on that. Communication is key, so I took a little bit of time to learn about the radio technology now available. I learned that the base model for Mo Motorola comes in around 2200 bucks, and they typically last from 8 to 10 years. One interesting thing I learned was that in 2001, Motorola dumped a lot of money into New Hampshire politics. So essentially, Motorola, this big company, lobbied the state, just classic rent-seeking, to get their products uh, out there. One of the vendors that was a bit different from the others was called Keep Sound Minds which is an organization that seeks to create awareness in cops about people with mental illness. The spokesperson put it to me this way, that he wanted to prevent cops from plugging one, one being someone with a mental illness, when on a call. Camera technology continues to become higher quality and lower in price. A spokesperson from WatchGuard Video told me that a couple of their setups, which have HD cameras that point front and rear, come in around 5000 bucks, and they have a new wearable camera that comes in around $800. There are other vendors present that also sold surveillance cameras, both to law enforcement and to private industry. One company, Integrated Mobile Systems, markets a key fob that has RFID chip in it so that security or other law enforcement personnel can keep track of certain individuals within buildings. When walking through the convention center, I overheard one vendor tell another event goer that when the economy is down, their business is up. That's pretty telling. The company is biospecialists which cleans up suicide and trauma related scenes. One vendor that I heard would be present is an addiction recovery clinic for police. The Brattleboro Retreat has three to 28 day long programs to help officers recognize when anxiety and other mind crippling feelings emerge so that they can better control them and cease turning to their addictions. The spokesperson noted that the services offered by the Brattleboro Retreat are in such demand that similar clinics could be open nationwide. But my thought is how about addressing the underlying issues that caused so many in that occupation to have addictions in the first place, not to mention the highest suicide rate and highest domestic violence rate. Cops are people, they're not machines, and it no doubt impacts them day in and day out that they're acting in ways that violates the rights of others. If we want to address this issue, let's just seek to change the institution. Let's strike the root. When leaving the conference, I spoke with one of the organizers that I had first met when entering the event. 
At that time, she attempted to find a colleague that would be willing to share on camera the purpose of the event. That never happened due to scheduling, but I did communicate that I was able to capture some content and plan to cut up a vid. She half-jokingly told me to be nice. That really stuck with me. If you were filming and plan to share your video from your time at Disney World or any place that caters to customers, would they advise you to be nice? Law enforcement today is provided by a monopoly of force, so just beneath the surface of the well-sounding statements of service and professionalism is an industry that thrives on force. Public relations is key for them. They want to continue to have people look at them as heroes, to sit idly by as they buy new deadly weapons and expand the departments and lock more people up. But we need to look at these products and this industry, this occupation and this, this corrupt institution for what it is. It's based on violence from the start. With such a foundation, it can't do good. Government only destroys, it does not create. How can these cops, who many of them who are nice folks, claim to serve and protect and help folks when their salary is paid for by stolen money, when their gear is paid for by stolen money, when they rely on nothing but force? It's time for a change.